Hello Mandela, welcome to another wonderful Arduino tutorial, actually the first one for Arduino itself, I guess another electronics tutorial as it is. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the things that I think we've gone through in class at some point here, but I just want to reinforce for those that need a bit of a review on it, there's nothing wrong with that. And um, basically we're going to be going through some stuff that happens after Colin Cunningham's absolutely awesome video from uh, um, from Adafruit. I'm just going to navigate over to that one because today's section is about 1.07 Hello World Arduino circuits. So this all assumes that you have watched this video here at the top. They do a great job talking about kind of what Arduino is. So this video is going to focus specifically on the details of setting it up as well as some things about the coding of Blink itself. Now Blink is what we would call a Hello World program. It's the kind of program that is going to be one of the first things you ever make your Arduino do. It's a way of making your Arduino communicate with the outside world. And it actually is our first assignment down here, and it just asks you to hook up a basic LED circuit. Now, we're gonna fancy this up a little bit. We're actually gonna hook up an RGB LED circuit, and we're gonna use it using an actual physical breadboard and Arduino setup, and we're also going to do this using a uh, Tinkercad circuit as well. So let's begin the tour. This is Arduino.cc. Now, this is an important website because it holds all of the information you guys need to kind of get started with Arduino. And the most important part here is under the software tab, it actually holds the IDE. That's the Integrated Development Environment. And the IDE is where you're basically going to be finding the actual programmer. And I'll just click on my IDE over here. It's actually the programmer that's going to program the physical Arduino itself. Now, this is, again, for all the physical pieces. The other thing you have on Arduino.cc that I really appreciate is under documentation, there's a tab here called reference. And reference is all of the different pieces of the Arduino language that actually function. This is what all the different things you can do with Arduino are, except for libraries. We talked briefly about libraries in the Colin Cunningham video, and uh, libraries are just expanded functionality. But this is the basics, these are the building blocks. Now, what we're going to do right now is we're going to hop over to Tinkercad, and the reason we're hopping over to Tinkercad is because Tinkercad lets us actually start with uh, testing our circuit out. And I'm just going to show you what I've hooked up. On the Arduino here, I've got 5 volts and ground hooked up to my breadboard. I actually have a A0 here. I actually have a, a temperature sensor also hooked up at the same time. I'm just going to make it go away. It might not go away. That's interesting. I haven't seen that happen before. I guess we're keeping it. That being said, we've got our ground set up, we've got our positive set up, and this is basically what I'm going to do on our actual Arduino and our actual setup. I'm not going to use the uh, breadboard power source like we did in the uh, electronics modules. Okay, I've also got one wire here. This would be the positive lead on my uh, LED. We can see that the cathode end is pointing towards the resistor, which is pointing towards ground. Okay, nice 470 ohm resistor there. And we can see that this wire runs over to digital pin number 8 right now. Now our goal right now is, to begin, is going to be to take the blink command, the blink code in Arduino and actually make it run with this on pin number 8. And this is going to be somewhat interesting. Let's go with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually hop over to my IDE. The other thing I could do is if you follow the assignment tab to blink, you end up at this page here. It shows you a little circuit similar to what we just hooked up. It also shows you the circuit schematic version of it, which is kind of cool. And then it talks about the code. This is reading through. This is not a bad idea. And I'm going to use the basic blink code here. I'm just going to talk my way through it. I'm going to hit copy, and I'm going to paste it into my in my compiler right here. Now, the compiler is where you're actually going to write the code. It's the same as the one you would find in the physical model Arduino. Okay. The only difference is that this here, the actual IDE or the actual compiler, is going to be the one that we can actually upload to a physical Arduino with. It's the one we're going to be having some fun with this guy in a minute with. But for right now, we're actually going to take this, and we're just going to hide it in the background. Now. Let's talk about what goes on in this code. And I'm, uh, I'm actually going to pop it open in the IDE just because it's a little easier to see. It can be a little bit larger so you can read it. That being said, there are really only two, really three parts that go into Arduino code. There's a bunch of stuff that happens before the code starts. This is often things like declaring your variables, which you should know from some of your introductory coding stuff. In this case, it's a big giant comment. You can see these brackets here. These denote the opening and closing of a comment. This comment is basically the information about this that tells us that this LED, this program, or sketch as we call them in Arduino, is going to turn an LED on for one second and then off for a second, over and over and over again. Okay, talks about where to find the LED, but I'm going to talk about that here. 
Now it gets to the core of the code, and every Arduino code has void setup, every Arduino has void loop. Now the setup and loop simply are the core building blocks of Arduino code. Setup happens once, loop happens forever. So you turn the power off, lose the battery, use an end command. That being said, we'll very rarely use the uh, end command, and usually you're just overwriting your sketch to keep things going. Let's, write, let's move on. In the void setup, this is going to happen once, everything between the curly brackets here and here. And in this case, all it does is create a pin uh, called LED built in, and we name, we take the pin mode and we set it to an output. Now, if I'm ever not sure about what one of these things does, I can actually right click on these in the IDE, and I can go find in reference. And this is super cool, because it's actually going to show me a little description of the actual command itself, a little sample code to show how it works. And in this case, the sample code to actually do this is the same code we're working with right now, which is kind of cool. Okay, it says we can either create this as an input or an output. And obviously, this being an LED, it is an output. We're sending voltage or we're sending signal out. Now, the LED that it's specified is called LED built-in. Now, this is a special command. Normally, we'd be uh, actually sending this to different pins on the Arduino. In this case, we're going to use the LED that's actually on the board itself. We're going to set it as an output, obviously, because we're going to send voltage out to it. Now let's scroll our way down to the loop here. Loop's kind of cool. This says digital write. It's going to take the LED built in, and it's going to write it to high. And we have this super cool comment over here. And yes, comments are cool. Please comment on your code. That says this is going to turn the LED on. High is the voltage level. So a high voltage level, in this case, is going to be sending 5 volts to that LED. Easy as that. We're then going to delay 1000 and again we consult the comment which is great. We wait for one second which we can then do deduce that the 1000 represents 1000 milliseconds, one thousandth of a second. We then go digital write, LED built in low, that turns the LED off, goes back to zero volts and then uh, we go to delay 1000 and basically this four, these four lines of code are going to keep happening over and over and over again. Let's see what happens when we actually run this thing. Let's hop back over to Tinkercad, not that one. Um, Where's my Tinkercad? There we go. All right, let's hop over to Tinkercad. Let's look at our uh, Arduino board, and the little L button right here is our built-in LED. So let's start a simulation and see what happens. Oh, seems like something went wrong here. Uh, we had an error. Let me just go take a look and see what happened. I think I may have. Uh, close. Set up loop. Did I not copy something correctly? I may have made an error here. Let's try it again and see what happens. Okay, let's see what happened. Uh, I've got my comments in there, that's correct. I've got void setup, that's correct. I've got void loop, that is correct. And I have something really strange going on here. This is new, I haven't seen this one before. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump back here and I'm just gonna recopy my code. Um, again, I haven't seen this one before and I'm not quite sure. It says it's not seeing void setup and void loop. So I may have accidentally copied in a space or something I wasn't supposed to, but let's see what happens, okay? 43 and 46, those are our lines where something's gone wrong. And I'm looking at them and not seeing anything right here, guys. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna restart it, maybe a Tinkercad glitch. And I'll tell you why I think it's a Tinkercad glitch. If I hop back to my IDE and I go back to Blink, okay, I actually could upload this to the Arduino right now to just make sure it actually functions. I go to Tools and I go down to Port. Now on your port, you're gonna probably see COM1, you'll probably see a random number of COM ports. Uh, you'll probably see a bunch of these if you have lots of USBs plugged in, but you can see that one of them is identified as Arduino Uno. That's the one that we've currently plugged in, and that's the one that we're going to use. Once we've selected that, we can actually click the button to upload, and I'm just going to jump over to the Arduino itself right now, and you saw very briefly there that the actual lights for the programmer, right there, actually lit up. And you can see that that L button, or that L light that is sitting on the uh, in Tinkercad right now, is actually lighting up every one second. Now this isn't a great test because the Arduino itself, when it's programmed out of the factory, comes with a, um, an LED that blinks every one second. So this might just be the default code. We might have failed. Let's test it. Let's change the delay to 2000. This should give us a delay of two seconds instead of one second. Now you can see that I have a two second on, two second off. That means that I clearly uploaded some code. I'm just gonna hop back to Tinkercad. I wanna see, uh, see what happened here and see if I've actually got an error still. Um, and see where we went with that. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Okay, I'm going to jump back to Tinkercad. It actually did function here. So um, I'm just going to take this uh, code here and I'm just going to change it to 13. Uh, the number 13 is actually the pin that the built in LED is connected to. I suspect I may have plugged in some code it didn't particularly like with that LED built in thing. 
Now when I change this pin 13, you can see this L button, or this L light turns on every second, turns off every second exactly like it's supposed to. Now, kind of given the way the ghost here that I've changed the actual number here, because we can mess with these numbers here. They're uh, technically constants that it's looking for, so they're actually looking for where to actually assign this. So in this case, we know that we've got an LED on pin number 8. Let's see what happens if we change pin number 8 to an output, and then we turn it high and it low, what actually happens. Let's click start. You can see that LED turns on and off at a cadence of every second because that 8 pin is now sending voltage out. And we can see that built-in LED on pin number 13 is no longer turning on and off. Now, for the sake of this class, if you want to use Tinkercad to do all of your circuits and send us the code and send us a short video of this working, there's nothing wrong with that. It's an easy way to do things. If you want to show it on your real breadboard, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to show you something kind of cool. I'm going to hop over to our actual breadboard. Actually, I'm going to hop over to Tinkercad, and I'm actually going to modify this code a little bit so that it actually turns an RGB LED on and off every second. So watch what we're going to do. I'm going to actually just delete this wire briefly so that we don't uh, have it in our way. I'm going to go grab an RGB LED very quickly. Okay, I'm going to spike that onto our breadboard. Nice and easy, like so. And then I'm just going to grab another version of this resistor. I'm going to put it on what I think is the cathode end. There it is. And connect it to negative. Okay. Now with an RGB, I can actually connect three of my legs of my uh, Arduino, pin 2, pin 3, and pin 4, onto this. And of course, 90 degree angles are your friend. I believe that's my green. I'm going to make it green to match so that we know what is what. Okay, I know that I got blue there. Awesome. Let's connect the blue wire up to the blue wire. And let's grab this guy, which will obviously be the R in RGB LED and be a red wire. There we go. Okay, so now I've got an RGB LED hooked up, and I know that if I go into my code and I change this pin from 8 to, let's say, 2, I should now be able to actually get myself a red blinking LED. Turns red, turns off. Turns red, turns off. But what if we want to do something weird about it? What if we want to make it so that it turns all the colors? Well, let's have some fun. I'm going to take pin mode, and I'm going to actually connect this. I'm actually going to paste this a couple times here. Space it out, and I'm going to go pin 2, 3, and 4 are all going to be outputs. And now we're going to make up some new code. We're going to have some fun with this. Okay, I'm going to make it so the digital right pin 2, the red light, goes on for one second, delay 1000, then I'm going to turn it off. Then I'm actually going to delete this code right here, this wait one second code, and we're going to have some fun. I'm going to take everything that's in here already, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to paste it. I'm going to paste it again. Now, is that cheating to copy and paste? Maybe. But really all I want to do is I want to test if I can turn pin 2 on and then off again, pin 3 on and off again, pin 4 on and off again, and see what happens. When I do that, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a red, then a blue, then a green, then a red, then a blue, then a green. I'm going to get a nice, uh, nice scrolling thing. Now, if I want to do the same thing on my breadboard, it's relatively easy. I've hooked up an RGB LED here. You can actually see I've got the wires here mostly labeled. I've got a resistor running to the ground part of the breadboard. Now, obviously, the ground, uh, the resistor itself is not going to, I'm just going to get my hand out of the way here, it's obviously not going to be connected naturally to ground because I don't have my power source here. So first I'm going to connect it, the cathode end, to my ground pin right there on my Arduino. Then, because I've used pins 2, 3, and 4, I'm going to take pin 2. I'm going to take pin, what did I say 3 was? 3 was going to be right after red. It's going to be the blue. Okay, pin 3 and pin 4, just like this. Now I've got a real, real world version of what I just hooked up in Tinkercad, all hooked up, ready to go on my Arduino. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back to my main screen here. I'm going to grab this code that I just used. I'm going to jump into another Arduino sketch. I actually have this same sketch already set up here, so I'm going to use it. And I'm going to select my Arduino. Right, it's already selected. Perfect. I'm going to press upload. We're going to hop back over to see what happened with the Arduino. We get a little upload for action. We get a red light, a blue light, and a green light. So. That's a way of playing with your Arduino. It's a way of playing with the digital inputs and outputs that go on with something like this and actually turning some lights on. Easy as that. Now you know the basics of Arduino. Your Arduino has said hello world to you. And you're ready to go on to the next thing. Cheers.